go. Hey, welcome to One Night. Yeehaw!
it rolling. Go on, clap your hands. Searching, your love was never fun. You made a way to get to me. You were the whisper leading me to your heart. Forever I belong to you. Now I can see clearly. I got you up for me. Oh, won't let me go. And I know it's true. And I know it's true. Make your way back to your seats. Hope. <laughs> Should have done it earlier. Should have done it earlier. Sorry. Go ahead and take your, go back to your seats and stay in this attitude of worship. We're going to continue in worship. Go ahead and go ahead and stand up. Don't sit down. Stand up. We're going to continue worshiping. But I have just a passage of scripture, God's word that I want to read to you. And if we can just pay attention real quick, we're going to get back into a worship song. But hey, I have this incredible, incredible verse. And uh, I want to read to you. It's from Philippians chapter two. And I'm going to wait real quick for everybody just to be quiet. Cool. If you brought your Bible, go to Philippians chapter two. If you didn't, you can just listen. And it says this, are you excited to be in one night? Isn't it going to be awesome? It's, it's, yes. It says, Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. Therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. 
Verse 11 says, And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the, to the glory of God the Father. Do you believe in Jesus this morning? I mean tonight? <laughs> Do you believe that he, that Jesus died and he rose again on the third day? Oh, come on. You, you got to get excited for that. That he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, the enemy thought, the enemy thought he had him. But on the third day, Jesus rose. And he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Come on, can we just say, Jesus, you are the king of kings. Jesus, you are, you are the, the king of kings. And you are the Lord of lords. You are, you are the Lord of lords. Come on, let's get back into worship. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Can you celebrate Jesus? Come on, can you celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this moment. Lord, we thank you for this moment that we get to enter into your presence. We don't take it lightly, nor do we take it for granted that you have allowed us to worship and praise your name. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all of the honor. It is due your holy and your righteous name. Let every heart in the room say amen. Go ahead and have a seat. Let's do it again. Howdy. Howdy. Hey, you guys doing all right tonight? Yeah. Doing good? Hey, it is good to see you. Welcome uh, to, to One Night. Uh, we're super excited. Um, did you guys know we had Post Malone leading worship over here to, uh, with us tonight? Uh, it was really cool uh, to see. I want to give them an opportunity. Thank you. It's so good. It's so good. Music is powerful. It's so powerful, in fact, that music has the ability to influence the way that we dress. It can influence the way that we talk. Music can influence the way even that we think. Music is so powerful that in more recent times, we have created a new genre of music called worship music. So now on Spotify, we have our rock playlist, we have our Swifties playlist, we've got our country playlist, we got our rap playlist, and we even have a worship playlist. The problem with this is that worship isn't a genre, worship is a lifestyle. Worship begins before we pop our AirPods into our ears and turn on Spotify and hit the play button on our playlist. Worship begins way before someone with a guitar walks out on the stage and gets behind a microphone and begins to sing songs about Jesus. So for the next few weeks, here's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about and answering the question, what is worship? What is worship? And we're going to be talking about what is worship for a couple reasons. The first reason why I'm, I'm really excited to talk about worship is I really want to recalibrate some of our minds and our hearts around what worship really is so that we can give God the worship that he deserves. But I also realize that there's some of us in the room that are a little bit newer to this idea of faith, or maybe you're even checking this Jesus thing out. Maybe you're sure you don't even believe that Jesus exists, and so you come to a place like this, and you, you see people raise their hands, and you're kind of like, man, what they're doing is a little bit weird. So I'm excited to talk about worship because what I want us to understand and what I want you to understand is that God isn't after you raising your hands and closing your eyes at the right moment during a song. The thing that God is after is he's after your heart. So what is worship? Well, the Apostle Paul helps us to begin to answer this question in his letter to the church of Rome when he says this. He says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. Now, two questions come to my mind when I read that phrase, in view of God's mercy. The first question is this, is why do we actually need God's mercy? 
And the second question is, what does the mercy of God look like? Paul is pretty clear in the book of Romans that we need the mercy of God because every single one of us in this room, including myself, we've all missed the standard. We've all fallen short of God's standard. And what Paul would call that and what we call that in the church is this thing called sin. Sin literally means to miss the mark, miss the bullseye, miss the target. So we've all missed the target. The problem with sin is that sin completely wrecks us. But the reality is most people think that the way sin affects us is like this lipstick affects this mirror. So we lie, right? So we, we got a lie on here, we, we messed up, we lied. We gossiped about someone, we had some lust thoughts today. Um, uh, maybe we dishonored, ooh, I got a, you get a sorry, I don't use uh, lipstick on the regular, okay? Like, uh, so we, we dishonor someone. So, so we think that sin affects us in this way. Like, hey, it's just got a little bit of a mark. It just leaves a little bit of a mark. It just leaves a, a little bit of things. People can see it, you know, but like, hey, if I really want to wipe it off, I can wipe it off. But what Paul points out in the book of Romans is that sin doesn't affect us like this lipstick affects the mirror, it actually affects us kind of like this hammer affects the mirror. I know, I'm about to have seven years of bad luck, but this is for you guys. So, so we lie, and we gossip, and we have lust, I know, I just shocked you tonight, maybe. Okay, 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 okay. You wanna know why we need the mercy of God? We need the mercy of God because this is what sin does for us, to us. We need the mercy of God because this is destroyed. We need the mercy of God because our lives without Jesus and because of sin look wrecked just like that. So what does the mercy of God then look like? What, is it, what does that mercy look like for us? The mercy of God looks like God sending Jesus while we were just like this. To take our brokenness upon himself instead of throwing us away like we deserve. This, this actually is going to the trash can in just a few seconds. We deserve for God to take us out like this needs to be taken out to the trash can. This is what we deserve. So that's what the mercy of God is. What the mercy of God looks like is God in Jesus taking all of our brokenness and inviting us into a relationship with him. And when we come into a relationship with him, Paul would tell us in another instance in scripture, he says, hey, he begins to create something new. And in Ephesians chapter two, what does he create? He's creating a masterpiece that looks something like this stained glass window. And what ends up happening is that when we come into a relationship with him, we receive his light. And this light, it shines in us. But it doesn't just shine in us, and I promise we're gonna shine this light in just a second, because I want you to see this. Or I'm gonna go do it real quick. Shh, just don't, 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 don't worry about it. Just give me a second. This didn't come on, did it? Did it not come on? It's okay, it's okay. I'm sorry. No, don't worry about it. It's okay, we still love you. Don't, no, 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 that's not, that's, that's my fault. Okay, when we put our faith into Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he, he gives us his light, and his light shines in us, it shines through us. Students, look at me real quick. This is what the mercy of God looks like, because when God looks at us, when we are in a relationship with him, he does not see our brokenness, he sees the beauty of his masterpiece. But not only does God see this beauty of this masterpiece, the world sees his masterpiece. 
This is again why in Ephesians chapter two, he says we have been created anew. We've been created, he created us in Christ Jesus. We are his masterpiece. So let me go back to Paul for a second. In view of God's mercies, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. When I was your age, my church, we went to a camp in Oklahoma called False Creek. And at False Creek, it was our custom our tradition for the guys at night to have wrestling night, all right? So we would wrestle. And so here's what we would do. We, we would take all of the beds and we would push them against the wall and we would take the mattresses off the wall and we would create this wrestling ring. And, and here's how this works. Okay, listen, I promise you I'm not condoning this because I would actually get fired if you guys did this uh, right now. But um, we would call someone out. So if you had beef with someone, you're like, hey, like, I'm calling you out, Landon, right now, all right? Listen, you ready? Me and you, I'm calling. And we would wrestle. The rules of wrestling that were really simple. You either passed out or you tapped out. There was, you weren't pinning, you either passed out or you tapped out. But the unwritten rule was you didn't tap out. You wanna know why you didn't tap out? Because for us in middle school and high school, we thought that tapping out or surrendering was a sign of weakness. And as I've thought about that moment in my life and, and thought about like what we used to do when we were in high school and middle school on wrestling nights, I just think that that paints a perfect picture of what our world's doing today. You see, our, our world right now, and even sin, has one rule. And the rule is this, is you either pass out or you tap out. But like me in high school and middle school, we ain't, there's not a lot of us who are, are choosing to surrender, to pass out. And what's happening is that the world has a chokehold on us. And it's taking us to the brink and where we're tired and where we're worn out and we're dealing with things and, and we're, we're thinking, okay, I can fight my way out of this. I can kind of like clean myself up in order to, to, to get out of this chokehold that this world and this thing that has on me. And, and it's just taking a little bit harder and you're wearing yourself out trying to clean yourself up and trying to get out of the chokehold that the world and sin has on you. And so you're like, okay, hey, I would rather pass out than tap out because if I tap out, I surrender to God and I surrender this, this thing to God or I surrender my life to God, then the world's gonna think I'm weak. Because surrender, we believe that surrender is a sign of weakness, but I'm here to tell you today that surrender isn't a sign of weakness. Surrender is actually a sign of worship. The only way the only way for us to get out of the grip that sin has on us, the only way for us to get out of the grip of the things of this world is for us to stop trying to fight it and for us to say, okay, God, I'm surrendering to you. I need you to get me out of it. So we need to tap out. We need to surrender. So that just leads me to a question tonight. Hey, have you, have you surrendered yourself to God? Like, have, have, you, have you had that moment where you're like, I'm no longer gonna try to get out of the chokehold of the world or the chokehold of sin, but I'm gonna actually surrender that. I'm going to tap out and I'm gonna say, God, I need you. Have you had that moment? If not, in just a few moments, I, I promise you, I want you to have that opportunity. But if you have tonight, let me just be, be honest with you. Because the, the book of Romans is also pretty clear. Is that, yes, you have been freed from the chokehold, but there are still things in you that have you in, in, a, in a chokehold per se. Whether it's an addiction, whether it's lying, whether it's gossip, whether it's, hey, what you look at on the internet, there's some stuff that has a grip on your life and you're trying to get out of those things. And what you need to do tonight is just you need to surrender fully to him. You're, you're realizing, oh my goodness, there's something wrong with me. 
There's something that's going on inside of me that I can't get out of this. And instead of trying, listen, I'm just going to say this. Be strong tonight and tap out and surrender to God. Have you surrendered fully to God? Because here's what I've learned. Here's what I've learned. I've learned that you either make the choice to surrender fully to God or God just may allow you to go to the place where you have no option but to surrender. And I don't want that for some of you. Actually, I don't want that for any of you. Sorry, for some of you, you're like, oh, he chooses people. No, I don't. Um, But but listen, I, I want that for you. I want some of you to find freedom tonight. But what you need to understand is this, is that the greatest spiritual act of worship that you could give God tonight isn't for you to lift up your hands and have a heart that's not fully surrendered to him. The greatest act of worship that you could give to God tonight would be for you to actually fully surrender to him right now and not wait, not wait, not keep trying to hold on, not trying to keep fighting anymore, not trying to keep doing it in your own strength, but for you to realize that that worship at its core is surrender. That's what worship is. That's it's a foundation. It is surrender. And when your heart is fully surrendered to God, you give him the type of worship that he deserves. When you fully surrender yourself to God or you give him your life and you receive what he's done for you, And you enter into a new relationship with him. You enter into this place where you no longer are bound or being choked out by the things of this world or the sin that so easily entangles you. But you gotta surrender. Are you fully surrendered to him? Are you surrendered to him? If not, tap out. Tap out. Would you, would you just pray with me real quick? Bow your heads and close your eyes. We're, we're not, man, I see it. I see it in some of the wrestling tonight that's happening in this room. I, I understand that there's some of you, listen, like it's hard for you to, to pay attention. And I see it in your eyes. If you're in this space and place Were you ready to surrender to Jesus for the very first time? Just say this to him. Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, tonight I'm giving you my life with every head bowed and every eye closed if you're here today and for the very first time you you said Jesus I give you my life here's what I want you to do I I want you to to raise your hand right now I want you to raise your hand if you gave your life to Jesus you said Jesus I give you my life I want you to raise your hand your hands raised, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look up at me real quick. Look up at me. Right right here. I look up at you. It's amazing. I'm so excited. I'm excited for y'all. Who else? Keep looking at me. If I I make eye contact, it's exciting, man. See ya. See ya. I see you. I see you. If, If you're looking, I see you. I see you guys back there. Absolutely. Who else? I see you guys. See you. See y'all. It's amazing. See ya. See ya. See you guys. See you. It's amazing. Listen, tonight, I'm going to ask you if, you, if you looked at me, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. And here's the thing. I want to help you out, in, and we want to help you out in your journey as you're beginning to follow Jesus. You, you have one of these um, black cards that says next steps in it. I'm just going to ask you to, to fill that out. And there's some boxes at the, in the back of this room um, tonight. If you'll fill that out, um, I pro- we're going to send you something tomorrow to help you begin this journey of, of following Jesus as you just gave Jesus your life. So fill that out for us. If you, if you don't have one around you, find one in a chair or just come find me at the end and I'll give you one. If you did that. We just bow, let's go ahead and close our eyes, bow our heads, close our eyes again because... 
I, I got another question tonight that, that as I, I was standing here, I, I just sensed that we need to ask. And maybe it's just for one person and that's cool. If you're here tonight and, and you, you have a relationship with Jesus, but man, it just feels like this world or, or some sin just has you in a chokehold and, and you're ready tonight to surrender and find freedom from, from whatever it is. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, it's an addiction. Maybe um, it, it's this a feeling of anxiety or worried or depression or, or something. like. If you are like tonight, you're, you're like, man, the world has got a grip on me in this area of my life. I know where I'm going. I know that I have a relationship with Jesus, but I need some freedom in this area of my life and I wanna surrender. If you have an area that you need to surrender to God tonight, would you just raise your hand where you're at? I, need to, I have an area where I need to just surrender some things to Jesus tonight. God, I'm gonna, I wanna pray, keep your hand, I wanna pray over you. Lord, I'm praying over these hands right now. Lord, I, I do not know. I do not know what's got a grip on some of us in this room right now. But what I do know, God, is that we've got a bunch of students in here tonight, God, that are saying, hey, I'm not trying to, I, I'm, I'm saying I need to surrender. I need to tap out, God, and I need you to step in. And so, Lord, I just pray right now that, that the weight of what they've been feeling, I'm praying right now, God, that, that maybe that, that insecurity, maybe the thing that maybe is keeping them back from going all in for you, Jesus, that they would realize that you love them, that you like them, and that the thing that you want is them right now where they're at. And so, Jesus, free them from the thing tonight, God. We believe that you are the God who brings freedom. Jesus, you are the healer. I pray that you would bring healing over anything in this, in this place and space that needs healing. I pray, God, right now that you would bring freedom over the things that need to be freed. I pray right now, God, that you would bring confidence in the areas that, Lord, they need to find confidence in, and not confidence in the things of this world, but confidence in you. I pray right now, God, that we would be a people who worship you, who lift up these songs in just a few moments that we're about to sing but God, that we would do it in a different and new way. Why? Because of in view of your mercies, we're offering ourselves back to you tonight, which is the thing that you want. You do not want our songs. You do not want our motions. You don't want a, a words that are coming out of our mouths. God, what you want is our heart and what you want is all of our hearts. So God, on behalf of all of my friends right now, here's our hearts. Come and take them. Lord, there's not a single person in this room that does not want to be fully surrendered to you tonight. So God, we surrender to you and we tap out. It's in your name. We pray. Amen. I want to invite you to stand where you are. Stay where you are, and we're going to stand, and we're going to sing these songs to the God who has given us mercy and grace and kindness. So let's stand and let's sing to him. Let's just stay in this moment of worship real quick. If you could just close your eyes where you are. Nobody looking around, nobody talking, nobody whispering. Incredible word we just heard by Pastor JJ of surrendering. And I want to just go an extra step farther. Hey, if, if that was you today, I know you, you raised your hand. I know you said that, but I want you to do something. I want you to step out of your seat. And if you're really, don't do it just because your friend's going to do it. But if you really want to surrender your life to Jesus, I want you to come up front. We're going to worship Jesus. But I don't want you to do it just because your friend does it or because it's the cool thing to do, but I just want you to step out in faith and say, Lord, I'm gonna surrender everything to you. In this moment, tonight, I'm not gonna wait another week, but I'm gonna surrender everything tonight. If that's you, with nobody looking around, I, all eyes closed, I want you to step out of your seat. I want you to make your way up front. Don't, don't be shy. That's, it's a wonderful thing to surrender and say, Jesus, that's me, that's me, that's me. Don't, don't come up here if you're not ready. We're about to sing this song called I Surrender. And in this moment, for about five minutes, I don't want you to, to create a distraction. I don't want you to talk. I don't want you to, to play around. I want you to 
just concentrate and just worship Jesus. You see, surrender is not a weak thing. A lot of us think surrendering is weak. It's actually the opposite. So Father, right now, in this place, we say we surrender. Father, we say that we are here to worship you. We're not here, Father, for just another service. We're here to give you all the glory and all the honor because you deserve it. And Father, these students are here to say right now that they surrender. Come on, let's, let's join in worship and just giving God all the glory and all the honor. Come on, let's worship Jesus. And if you want to come up front and you're still there, you can make your way up to the front and just worship because we're going to worship him with everything we've got today.
so um, we, we don't typically do something like this, but we, we thought it was uh, appropriate. Uh, so yesterday, um, we did elect a new president. Um, now, before we go any further, one, one of the things that we wanted to do, and then I promise you we're going to go back and we're going to continue to worship Jesus tonight, is um, we believe that as, as believers that we, we serve the king above all kings, Jesus, and we are people of his kingdom. And so this past Sunday, we, we had a confession that we, that we read together, and I thought it would be appropriate for us to read this same confession. And so we're gonna pop it up on the screen, and then we're gonna read it together, and we're gonna go back and we're gonna continue. So we're gonna read this together, all, all of it together. Ready? We are an upper story people, and we have but one king. We are civic-minded, but Christ-convicted. We have strong affiliations, but one true allegiance. We obey all authority, but we are beholden to only one. In this lower story, we seek to humble, faithful, and patient. In these times of uncertainty, we speak peace and live from peace, knowing that we stand upon rock and not sitting sand. We welcome our neighbors and we love our enemies. We pray for those who persecute us and the yard signs that provoke us. Our faith is not in pundits, but in the promises of God, which are Christ incarnate, Christ crucified, Christ buried, Christ risen, Christ ascended, Christ seated today on the throne, and Christ coming soon to make all things new. So fling wide, you heavenly gates. We make way for the coming King, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead, so that in him everything he might have the supremacy, and in him all things hold together. We believe this today, so we surrender to him. our prayer we want to know you more 
We want to surrender to you completely. Not 25%, Father, not 50, but 100%. Father, thank you for this time of worship. Father, we love you, and we say thank you for meeting us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said... Amen, amen. Hey, high five your, your, the person next to you. Don't move, just high five them. Remember, as you walk out today, cards, next step cards right by the doors. Before you head out, before you head out, we're going to do one more song. We got one more song. And maybe this time you guys won't stay down there. We got one more song. But before you do next steps, if you want to take your next steps in baptism or anything, fill out the paper. Outside, in by the door, you can drop it off. Come on, let's sing. One last song. This time, don't stay down.